Good morning. Morning, morning. Sir, we had some difficulty starting. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, all. Morning, morning, Mr. National President. Oh, you better stand when you say that. Eh? <laughs> morning, all. Morning, Reuben. Sir Reuben. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Bull. Good morning. How are you? You don't stand. Good morning, everyone. Sitting in your room. Morning, Prof. Morning. Hi, Prof. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year, everyone. Good morning, Ruben. Morning, morning. All good. Uh, good morning, all. <coughs> morning. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning, Pat. Morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, morning, everyone. Again, um, apologies for the for the late start. Um, I think we will just go straight to it because of time. Uh, I hope everyone has had a, a good break, uh, and uh, I hope that our 20, 2022 is much better than the past two years uh, for the profession. Uh, I think uh, uh, in, in a, after a long time, we've had uh, companies advertising posts. Uh, that I think there's, there's six companies that are looking for people at the moment, um, which is something that has not happened in a while. I hope that it's a sign of things to come, that things are turning. Um, so I wish you, every, I wish everyone uh, the best in uh, this year, and I really hope things turn out good for the country. And in, in our profession. So this morning we have uh, Manova Boni. Uh, he's an architect, academic. Uh, he leads a company, uh, Chubaleju uh, in Marisburg. Uh, so today he's going to be sharing his journey uh, in architecture. Uh, over to you, thank you. Uh, good morning, colleagues, members at SIA, KZN. Thank you, Chairperson, for your heartwarming sort of uh, introduction. Thank you so much. And I thank for the space given to you by yourself. Sorry, let me just kill this. Um, look, um, <clears throat> I just hope everyone has started uh, 20, uh, 2022 rather in a very um, good start. Uh, 2020 has been a very challenging. 2021, it almost never started. I call 2022, uh, 2021, because it's just a continuation from where we were. Uh, we've lost some available nice people and uh, we just are very appreciative that we are alive and we are continuing i'm glad that um, some of the colleagues that have been within the industry they're still around uh, we just need to change the the economy and uh, everyone becomes busy and it becomes a fruitful year with that said and done um uh, Chairperson, uh, we will be talking about nature, people, the buildings, and we will be talking about where the journey that we have embarked on from onset, starting business to Valley to Architects. I think for many years, um, and I've been always been fascinated about the space, people, and everything else that exists in life. I think uh, that journey is still continuing. And so I don't think- So to step, uh, I don't know if you can, able, you can be able to make the, the screen, uh, your, your, your 
the PowerPoint full screen? Is it not being shared? Sorry. Uh, it's shared, uh, but it's not uh, full screen. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes, like that. Perfect. Thanks. So, <clears throat> so that's what we'll be talking about. Architecture is not much knowledge of form, but form of knowledge. Uh, that's been at Shumi, and we 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 will be using that as a as a as a way forward. Well, Tuvalu to started two thousand and nine by myself, and um, throughout that journey, we had seen some interesting warm bodies uh, joining Tuvalu, to, and when it started, I think I needed to call people to become a part of us uh, not seen as an individualized um, practice, but uh, to relate to the, the word itself, it means that our opportunity. So those opportunities are there. Um, I think everyone has contributed immensely in that practice. And I'm grateful that, that it does exist. Um, these guys they are part of the community, which is a member of OSIA. Some of them are still students, and I've always seen some, a lot of students coming and going from that practice. And it's basically that space for everyone to come and find themselves in that space, come and go and contribute towards that. There would be a time where we, I won't be a part of that, but that journey, I would like to see it continue. Well, <clears throat> Colleagues, uh, Mr. President, I visited Zanzibar after a very fruitful year that we had uh, since I started 2009. And I decided to go to Tanzania, Zanzibar um, to explore and have a nice time with my family. And when I got there, really, I think the space was just inviting not to mention the warm oceans that we've got, a very nice landscape that exists there. And uh, the word that I came back with it, it was a neoclassism, interpret interpretation of their own architecture, the space, uh, culture, um, the art that existed there. I think it just got me and I thought, by coming back with that uh, and emulate it within the space that we have around uh, KZN, and Peter Marisbeck to be particular. I think it, it would spin off some great positive input. I think um, when I was there, I've realized that um, the, not so much that is different from what we have. I mean, ox wagon that are being as a means of transport in the small community, it's something that is heartwarming. Uh, people, they just not shy about what they are stand for. People, they just proud of who, who they are. They are not being forced to, to, to change things uh, in, in so many and quick way. I think also the streets, they afford that. Uh, in the way how they've been uh, designed. Um, so it just allows everyone. This is a mode of transport. Uh, you can see that I was enjoying myself. If you are not there, then the, the, the issue of um, traveling by boat, on the boat also, you know, it's just, it's amazing. Uh, you can see that there's nothing that is so different from that boat. It's a standard. They built themselves, and it's amazing. We had a very nice time. Uh, if you are not there, then you, you're traveling using a scooter. I think uh, that, that, that shows how people live. And now that we in this pandemic, I've seen so many of motorcycle, either if it's not a, a take a lot, uh, it would be just the guy who's preferring to use a scooter. And, and that as well, if it's being um, handled in the right way, I think we, we can have a mode of transport. 
And I still would like to see some people riding on the horseback, sort of um, going up and down, cycling, cycling community and people, they've already been there in that space. I think we need to be able to provide, look, our, our country provides uh, for everyone. I think we just need to uh, make a space for everyone to be happy in that happy space. Well, <clears throat> as I've said in the beginning, that um, I have seen some spaces. Um, this is the old town in, in, in Zanzibar. And most of these towns, Zanzibar was a trade, a slave trade uh, town, as it were. And that's where people used to go and buy some slaves and take it uh, into Europe and so on. And what, what was so uh, significant, significant in this, in, this, um, in this town? It was just the space, how the space was being designed, the art around the doorways, the entrances, um, alcoves, uh, balconies, um, alleys, uh, you would see even the network <laughs> that is happening in that space, the connection. The buildings were never, never designed to able to adapt with the new change. I think it was just um, the way I saw it, uh, it's a space that says that we also have some town that were designed in the, in the early years, ages, uh, we can able to change it as we move towards the transformation of the smart city, eco cities and so on. I think really we, we just need to look at what we have and how we can able to change it for the better way. Um, and I'd like to start uh, looking at that uh, Zanzibar old city or old town as, as, a, as a method for us to unpack a number of things. I'm still yet to go and visit some, some towns. Um, I need to go to, um, to other islands, the small islands, uh, to able to check that because I'm very fascinated about the urban design. I don't know, uh, uh, Chairperson, if the colleagues would able to engage in the questions Perhaps, um, or we'll leave that to the end where everyone asks questions. Yeah, we, we can leave it to the, to the end and then we can just go through, yeah. Okay. Thanks, thanks for uh, the, the, the doorways and the entrances, uh, the way how they've been designed, <clears throat> um, the art that exists in those. Uh, we were told that some of those, um, uh, you would see some of those uh, spikes that, is, uh, that are designed there. And I must say each door, there's no standard door in this tower. Uh, each door is customized designed and it's just beautiful. The type of wood that are being used there, I think it's a marine wood that, that lasts forever. You can see the carving that is there. Um, it, it's just amazing uh, to see a uh, amount of effort and time that is being employed uh, in designing that. It's, and it's something that we don't see quite often. We're using now standard, we are in the industrialized uh, town, times where everyone needs to go off and buy it off shelf. It's, it's, we, we, I think if again, uh, we were to ask ourselves from where these times were, we can go back and now start beginning to design each and every single uh, element in the building. Um, try and, you know, the, the, even the light, light fitting needs to be designed differently. Uh, I think that's why some of these buildings nowadays, they just look the same. We really need to tie, check and find a way to able to change that. Um, and, and, and be the change. I hope that in 2022 20, going onwards, that would be a, a thing of a past where we, we allow the off-shelf design. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks. 
Sir? Sir? Right. Um, <clears throat> these are the things that um, on the drawing board, these are the projects that we're currently working on. I'm currently working on, on these projects. Um, uh, maybe Eco City Devel Development in the Theory and the Practice by Jeffrey R. Kennedyworth, envisioning future city ideas and, and, and examples. Um, going forward, I think I have worked on this project. This is the a small sort of um, a small urban design along the entry in Peter Murray's back. Uh, if you have watched the news yesterday, you would have seen that uh, some of the unrest happened along the entry. Entry was closed. Um, it's a town that is being left untouched for many years and it begs for, for the change. And the client came on board. And he said, well, there are existing so um, existing building that he doesn't want to change. He doesn't want to demolish. There's a strip, there's a strip which is um, uh, sprayed that is running down from the, uh, what you call that, um, from it's a, it's, a, it's a small sort of a, a river or a stream that is running from uh, the Royal Shore and it goes all the way to join Umsunduzi River. And it's being littered so badly and it begs for the change. And we thought we can able to play around with that. Um, that area has a lot of taxi, taxi, um, uh, communication, so like taxi, what you call it, transportation. Um, and in that area, the client wanted a small sort of a suburban uh, shopping center across that main road, which is Chota Madala. There is a um, um, Brookside that was bent in the unrest that last year's unrest. So he wanted to emulate something similar, but that they toned down more of the community. So what we have done is that we have uh, taken away the taxis in that area and allow people to, to walk into that space. Um, I can't show you those, um, those axes, but that brown axis, uh, it's a main one and the bridge and we were hoping to try and sort of attenuate some of that, uh, that, that street to create um, sort of a respect of uh, environment between the environment and, and, um, and the architecture, which is the built environment. So, this is currently, I can't talk much about it, but uh, it's something that we're still negotiating with the municipality. Uh, some of the issues that we are currently having is that the municipality, um, they are, their schemes are very sort of rigid. Um, we are unable to change a number of things, but uh, hopefully it, it would see light uh, in the near future. Uh, Menk, you can I just ask a question here. Uh, is, there, is there any uh, limitation or restriction? Uh, as I see that development is quite close to that stream there. Yes, so there are uh, limitations. Um, uh, the flood lines are, are the limitations, but I think we can deal with that. The problem that we are unable to deal with is the schemes that are currently with the municipality on what you can do and what you can't do. Um, I have seen some of the projects, I think it was uh, Mr. Reddy, Ruben Reddy, who has done some of the urban design in that square, same as Prof Adebayo in that area, which is the CBD. And I, 
Yes, they have done some of the changes uh, at that time. Maybe this, that was the old time. Things have changed recently. Um, we were, I was actually using that as their, as a platform, as a template to able to change that downtown as well. So the limitation is more of uh, town schemes that are unable to change easily. Yeah. Uh, I think those days they can able to push the boundaries to make it change. Uh, mm -hmm. Land ownership as well is a bit of a challenge. Uh, it's a huge challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the guys can't able to um, give you what you need to design and able to change uh, the environment. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks for that. Right. This is a beautiful. Uh, I think here I'm very excited about this project. It's an old project that we. It's along um, the Duzi River, not the Duzi Mtuela River. Uh, it's a lodge. It's a. It's a resort. Uh, the client uh, is one of the Arabian guys, a consortium of Arabian guys together with the local guys. And I get something that is relaxed. Um, we started this project and we, we, it's been coming and going for many years, you know. Um, I really hope that it would start. I'm very excited about being given a, a sort of you can do whatever that you like uh, that type of attitude and the challenges that we're having here is uh, it's all about the environmental issues uh, eia uh, working within the the river which is a big river which is the Tugela river also this one i think it would develop itself. I, uh, we will be able to talk more about this uh, again, should I have been given an opportunity to present. I think I am very excited about it. Um, it has, it's a sort of an environment where people go and visit. There is a high end uh, sort of a, um, uh, what to call it, um, five-star sort of uh, chalets, and then low to three-star chalets. Within that, there would be certain animals that would be in that in that resort uh, that are human-friendly. You people, there are trails, walking trails, and so on. So, with now COVID, uh, I think it also tells us that this is how we need to change the space, how to design the space, how you 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 can able to accommodate people at the lower end, which is a three-star meeting onto the same space with the people, or the VIP or a, 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 the high-end luxury boutique kind of um, chalets, but those same people they will able to meet in the same space this is a arts um cultural um, um i would say arts and culture uh, we've got it we've got a design we've got this design uh, and a brief to design something along amagadi which is somewhere in uh, the, the the emphasis was it needs to be an environment that allows the the zulu culture um, um they they wanted to have the beehives as part of the architecture they're trying to draw people who are making movies in, in, into the space uh, trying to uh, draw the community to be a part of this environment uh, i think the limitations and the challenges that we are having is that um, the site itself it's beautiful we can do whatever that we need to do but with the type of housing that is happening surrounding the site. 
whenever a person who wants to see how the Zulus, um, how the Zulus, how if you want to do a movie or a video or a drama or whatever, uh, be specific. We went to a show where there is a show where um, resort that we went and view in the Shaga Crawl. Uh, it's now being owned by, um, I think it's Ohosan, if I stand to be corrected. Uh, they have these, that's where Ushaga was, uh, the, the drama was uh, shot. We try to have more or less the same thing happening in this area onto this space. I think given an opportunity again to able to change a number of things, but I'm just worried about the surrounding where this is, is, is at at the moment, uh, because it just shows the current type of design. And I don't think it would able to provide what the client wants, but we will see that. Uh, there's another site that we have um, um, that we have proposed to our client. <clears throat> um, this is um, somewhere in in the Midlands. Um, Midlands meander. It's a very sloppy site. It's very challenging. The client wanted to have the chalets facing the Duncan Speck Mountain. And I must say that um, we, we're having fun onto this, but we're just having some challenge with regard to the slope of which we will win it at the end. Uh, I think um, perhaps uh, without any 3D dimension, it's something that we're still working on. We will be able to present it later when we can able to show something, how the forms, um, how we converse with the form uh, and the terrain in that environment onto that space. Uh, I think it would be a very exciting. We've got big decks that sort of celebrate to that space. We're just having a bit of a challenge of the close proximity of each house next to each other. I think whenever you want to go to the drunken spec, you just be onto that uh, space in that room facing the mountain. You don't want to be close to the other chalets. I think. Uh, given another land, we can able to make it, um, uh, we can unpack it to sort of uh, make it, uh, create a space next to the chalet so that they can actually enjoy the space next to the, to the building. Um, I'm going back. Some of the things that we have here currently would be the, the project that we have concept with that are currently on the conceptual stage. Uh, Emma, those that are in the design space, yeah, yeah, yellow, those are the, that would be on the construction phase and completed. We, you would see here a number of dots that are currently since 2009 up until now. And I must say that most of that portfolio that we've got it's mostly the schools. So we've done the schools, a lot of them, some of them designed and done in collaboration with the colleagues, uh, which I think they're still in the, in, they are in part of this, onto this space. Um, <clears throat> one of the projects that is quite exciting, it's at Zimbiti, where the client wanted to board a site for 1.2 million. And we went through the approvals. Um, um, site is very challenging. It has a lot of limitation. A, a big, thick sort of controls what you can do, what can't, what can't be done. It's in the Gulf estate. What is so exciting about it is it's an environment that is, uh, that is very controlled. Uh, we are very excited with that project. Um, 
you would see the green at the top. Uh, they are saying that it needs to be uh, 25 meters away from the road. You can sink it um, below the hill. They don't want to see the eaves. Uh, th there are a number of controls and we're just excited. It's still on the concept stage. We are designing it. Sorry, concept stage, we are done. It's been approved with the uh, Sioya, which is Simbiti housing estate. This is um, a project that we did with Osborne Lang Architects. It's a La Messe School of Excellence, uh, Math Science and, and Technology. Uh, we're very excited. It's a project that was challenging in terms of the time that we needed to do it. Um, I think I've learned uh, quite a lot from these project, this project in particular, learning from our colleagues, um, learning from uh, the client itself, uh, the needs. Uh, this site is right on the hill of La Messe. It used to be a La Messe primary school, which we need to change some of the buildings, but most of them were demolished. So we're very excited about it. Uh, these are the housing. The site is very tight and compact. Uh, on the right, on the left-hand side, that would be your your housing uh, dormitories. On the right side, it's a hall and the a dining hall. I think it's, it's, it's um, the use of the brick, able to use the material wisely. It's a very corrosive environment. Uh, we, we've done what we could. Um, we've got challenges of wind being right on the pinnacle of the, of the hill. Uh, we needed to reduce some of the, those eaves so that we don't have wind catching in, in, onto that space. Um, it's a rural school, as you would know, and some of the colleagues that have worked with um, education. Uh, these schools, this is one of the schools that we did in 2012. Um, and we were very excited to work on to that uh, on that project. Um, what, why I'm presenting this is just the use of the courtyards, uh, which is something that I hold it very dearly to my heart, to be able to create these pocket of spaces, allowing the kids to you know senior in terms of the senior spaces. And one of the things that we need to talk about, should I be given another space to present it to you, would be to do an analysis. And in Piramayosbeck, I think we are fortunate to have these uh, school campuses. We've got uh, Epworth, we've got College, we've got Hilton, Michael House. And again, if you look at in terms of the, how they design, they have designed those spaces. It's amazing. I think it's something that we need to draw and learn from them. And uh, we need to create an environment where we, we, we really look at how the kids, uh, when they're at school, in terms of how they engage uh, with their peers uh, within those learning spaces, how they spill out uh, for them to, um, to socialize. Uh, yes, we might have the standard that we're working on. Uh, some of these, um, some of the designs that we've got that we, we work La Messi to be part, particular. We had to change, you know, um, uh, the standard and try and come up with something that is totally different. Um, East Coast architects that have done some of these schools, we've looked at their precedent study and we really look at how the colleagues dealt with that. And I really think that nowadays we really need to talk to uh, our client, uh, the government, uh, and, and see if we can able to change the certain things. The schools can't look the same. Yes, I believe that it's, they can do the same thing, but the spaces and the infrastructure should not be the same. 
uh, it should be designed differently to create uh, that excitement. Um, so again, lessons learned here, we've just played around with the spaces, um, yet we are working within those standards, uh, working with an existing, we are very excited about it. It came out nice, I visit the school, because I hold, it, I hold it very dearly to my heart. It's one of those projects that um, you get to design uh, when you started the practice, you just knew in the industry um, and you just get excited. I, I think you guys, you would know what I'm talking about. Um, this is another school that we, busy with. It's a school of excellence. Uh, it's somewhere in the Midlands. It has some currently challenges and we've just excited, we've learned quite a lot from the, from the previous buildings that we have done, previous schools that we have done. Uh, the challenges that we have it's all about the environmental aspects and the considerations, the flooding zones that we've got, um, a harsh environment, the snow that falls in that area, which then makes us to create uh, different pitches. It gets hot, it gets cold in winter. Um, um, it's just an agricultural environment that is surrounding the school. So again, I think uh, when given an opportunity, we'll be able to uh, unpack it and talk about, talk about it more uh, when the time avails. I think we're very excited. It's, it's currently in the approval, approval stage. The client is Department of uh, Education we will be able to talk about it in more again. This is another school that we, uh, it's busy now, it's gone through various approvals. It's existing, we trying to, it's, uh, I mean, most of it, it's, uh, it's existing. It always gets 100% uh, achieve, achievement every year, you know. Um, it's in the rural area, I think, Education saw so, uh, what the school can able to produce and they felt that there is an opportunity to make it a smart school. Uh, being in the rural areas, the challenges that we've got, electricity is a challenge, uh, water infrastructure being provided the mu by municipalities, it is a bit of a challenge. Uh, we, we, we fitting as much as we can there uh, there would be a solar light, a solar solar harvesting, uh, panels to harvest energy. We've got a storage tank. Uh, boreholes will be done here in the school, and we we need to provide more of the trees um, to just to soften up the edges, create shade for the kids. Uh, in the days uh, like yesterday, where we're hitting a temperature of about 30, 38 degrees in Peter, in Peter Maris Bay. Um, and again, given an opportunity um, for us to design those courtyards, because I think that most of the schools, they just work nicely with the courtyards, enclosed uh, to break winds, uh, harsh winds, uh, create a space for the kids to be contained. Um, I, I think we are very excited about that as well. This is currently on the final stages of designs. We were given an opportunity as well uh, to do the interior, interior design, give it a bit of a new lease of life to Eddington Hospital. And this is what we're currently working on. Um, it's challenging now that we've got a COVID. We were given a brief before COVID. I think things are starting to change 
uh, with the infection infection control uh, how we can deal with the with the communication between people creating those um, those screens so again <clears throat> I think we will able to talk more again when that develops. It's a very excited, uh, exciting project for us. More especially the history that is uh, in that in that hospital, Eddington. It's being known for wrong reasons uh, in, in 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 many ways. Um, if we are given an opportunity to change, it has been the external designs uh, giving it. Uh, um, aesthetic appeal on the outside now the the department wants us to look at in the internal part of it i think we are very excited about that um working with um, all types of communities be the clinicians be the patients be the um uh, community at large it's just exciting uh, to able to play around with the colors, to able to play around with the the textures, um, harsh wind that is happening uh, happening along the explanade area, it's just exciting. Staff accommodation, somewhere in uh, uh, Nganza, where we've got. Uh, doctors and nurses working away from home and we needed to provide home away from home kind of uh, accommodation so that uh, they deal with the uh, uh, the harsh of being in the rural areas i think this is just exciting um the site is used to be owned by norwegian um a religion group which then department of health uh, took over from that group uh, the type of architecture the roofscapes um used to be a church so it's a mission sort of a mission mission site so we we try to emulate that uh, and what we do uh, I think it's it's currently on construction. I think we, it's the best. We will be able to talk more about it when it's finished. Um, we'll, we will share the lessons learned uh, on that project as well. This is another view for that uh, on that on that side. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> Working on the shopping center uh, in Limbombo. Uh, I'm not a fan of uh, shopping centers. They just do something totally. Uh, I sort of drag myself when I'm designing a shopping center because it's not something that I like. Uh, the design of uh, of any shopping center is just uh, makes it a box and internalize things it's not something that is relating to the outside environment but nonetheless it's some of those projects that we've got to do it and try and bring about the change so uh, it's one of those projects that we are doing this is wamashu shopping center it has challenges of uh, criminal activities. So the client said to refurbish this, he would like to enclose it, make one entrance point, uh, instead of various different entry points. So that's what we've done now. Um, and, and again, budget is very limited. So currently the shopping center was attacked in July. It was bent partially, and now it gives us an opportunity to relook to relook at it differently. It's quite exciting as well. This is the one opposite the station, I mean. Correct. 
It's a one opposite the station. So we will look into it as well. Um, I think uh, with others as well that we are involved with to try and restore some of these shopping centers. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is Moses Nabida, Office of the Premier. Office of the Premier it used to be um, a Natal Reserve Bank. It's next to the next to the Natalia building. And this site is the history that it has. Uh, it's from telecom being and ten, telecom ex. No, it started as a as a um, Natal. A reserve bank. It then went to become a telecom exchange site. Uh, some of the architects, well-known architects that worked on that, uh, Ishmael Kasamji, my colleagues around here, colleague around here, also worked on that project. Uh, the challenges that it has, uh, we need to it has a problem of being defecated by birds. We need to do a bird proofing. Um, aging, some of the materials are failing. So we're trying to look at the ways and the means to retain the history, the heritage history, and to able to dress it differently. And these are some of the things that we are talking with, with the department on that. It hasn't been approved. It hasn't been consulted with the, the colleagues, uh, colleagues in the heritage heritage uh, committees um, on that aspect. But it, I felt that nonetheless, it's something that we need to show and see how best we can change it, how we can provide uh, just a dressing up of that building. That's another view to it. Um, and we also involved in creating the Cocta precinct. Um, as you would know that the governmental, the department governmental entities are now creating some of these prisons. Uh, the site is very challenging, uh, I must say. Parking is an issue. Um, and we've got a heritage problem again, issues that not problems, it's just the challenges of what you can able to demolish and what you can able to demolish. Uh, we need to maximize. I think again, with the COVID lessons, I don't think that those spaces would be needed, uh, but we're trying to consolidate these offices. Uh, and able to create a, a street, able to create an environment to bring back that street life. Uh, this, our streets in Peter Marisbeck have been claimed by vagrants, have been claimed by a, a very sort of um, bad characters, and that needs to be claimed back. Uh, that is an opportunity for our municipality to look into that as well and see how best they can able to revitalize the whole city uh, or some various streets uh, for that uh, for that uh, for the, for that for those reasons that's another view to it you would see a, a house a very small house there which we left at in touch in that corner um, and then those white buildings towards your right also, uh, those are the heritage buildings that are recently been renovated and we're not gonna touch them. This is the a beautiful project that I'm very excited about. Uh, it's a library somewhere uh, in Richmond. Um, it's very exciting for us. Uh, it's, the history of the site, the community that the site, we 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 providing the, well the beneficiaries of this of this project. I think that excites me quite a lot. 
because they've just opened up. They are very excited about it. They are very supportive. Uh, I think working with those kind of communities, it just makes us spend a little bit of extra work to, to, to make the community very excited. I think that would be all for now. Um, Mr. President. Thank you so much, uh, Manova, uh, for that. Um, I think I, I like, uh, I enjoyed your, uh, your approach to, to, to schools, uh, that when you, when you started your career, <clears throat> it, it, it's something that you do not look down upon. It's something that you, you, you made sure that it's executed correctly. And uh, now you can actually um, implement those principles and lessons learned uh, to a much bigger school like the one in Midlands. So that's a, that's a really good thing to, to, to look at. I wanted to find out, but uh, on the shopping center at Omash, what inspired your facade there? Um, <clears throat> I know that earlier you, you said that uh, you don't want the, the shopping center face to just be a wall. Uh, there's a quite an interesting facade that you did there, Bamash. What inspired you and how is that uh, put together, the materials? Uh, Skura, look, the, the, the challenge that we have uh, there is that we, it's, a, it's a very hostile environment. Being in a hostile environment, it begs you that you need to come up with a, a structure that is hostile, uh, that is not perforated uh, to, you know, you're creating basically a wall like a prison. Um, and then we came up with a design to say, let's perforate it, let's create so that people can still see and have an interface between the shops internally, yet creating a barrier that is not going to be uh, easily um, attacked by anyone who wants to do that. And then we thought maybe uh, because of uh, that perforate, it's going to be boring. You know, uh, let's come up with uh, some vibrant colors. Uh, trust me, this idea, there is another change to it. Um, it's not being presented now, but we, we're coming with a different appro approach to that. So the number of colors, I'm very excited about the vibrant. It might not be uh, so much about the, uh, not so much about the, the signages that are happening there, but it's just the panels uh, uh, that can light up during the night, but people can't break into those panels because they're very small opening. So, it's just, um, you know, history uh, of Deben. It's a vibrant, everyone is going to Deben. You would see some of the riches that are there along the beach front. It's got some vibrant colors. Uh, we, we're trying to bring some sort of life into it. I don't know if I've, I've answered you on that, but it's something that we thought we instead of just having some a, a, a boring wall, we need to perforate it and come up with some various colors. And we're using those colors basically as just a, 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 a primary colors using of the red, orange, blue, and so on. So yeah. Oh, okay. No thanks, uh, colleagues. Um, I'll open the floor for any questions and comments. Uh, if you want to make a comment. Uh, thank you, uh, can you just uh, talk a bit about your, your design process? I see a lot of your uh, uh, site plans are still uh, hand-drawn, um, which is actually quite good to see. You don't see that that much these days. Hey, Skura, I've got a number of sketches that don't make it to this presentation. Uh, my bringing uh, come from the Natal Technicon those days, where 
uh, we were meant to, to use the drawing board. And the office that I used to be in, um, it may be, uh, I think the directors that are there, Paul, Bruce, and Keith Alcock, uh, were the guys that are still the old, old school. The background then I've got is that everything needs to start from the, from the sketch, make sense of it on the paper, uh, play around with it, um, and then you take it there and put it on computer. I still, nowadays, uh, I still do that. But there's, a, there's quite a lot of sketches that are, that are tossed in the bin um, to make it to this platform. Those are the few that you see there. Uh, those are selected one, I think the luckiest one. Uh, I'm not gonna change in any way to start sketching. I start doing small sketches, very tiny sketches about thumbnails kind of sketches. Mm. Um, I'm just happy that way, you know? I've done, I've got a number of pens that I use to illustrate what I need to illustrate it. And the guys that I have in the office, they're just smart with these uh, tools. Uh, they know how to use the latest um, program to get to the point that I want to be in. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. That, 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 that brings me to, to my other question. Um, you've been in practice now for, for 11 years which is not a, a small thing. Um, have, you, have you balanced being able to uh, dedicate design work in the office? Uh, or how, how is that going? Because if, if um, I, know, I know it from myself, running a smaller practice, most of the design uh, falls on me. Um, have you been able to, to grow beyond that or how, 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 how does that work in your office? Uh, I think uh, I learn a lot from the students, you know, the guys that I have at the office, we inspire each other all the times. Uh, I've had some of the guys that have been at university coming back and wanting to uh, get into that space of design. Um, Look, there are certain projects where I give it to my guys at the office to design it. And then I will come add a little bit of 20% there to change uh, uh, some of, or to put my sort of signature to it. Sometimes it's not necessary. Uh, it's just that uh, maybe I overpower them <laughs> in one way or another. But it's just exciting. Uh, the guys, they, they design, they've got a, um, a blank check to able to design what they want to design at some point. Um, the buildings that I, uh, or some of the project that I'd like to have a control uh, with, uh, it's those type of small uh, schools, um, hospitals, uh, we still yet to come up with um, tourism, uh, resort. I'd like to, to be in control there. Trust me, I've designed some of the taverns um, that are not making into this platform, which I'm very excited about. Uh, the guys that tend to design houses at, in my office, uh, I will show you some of the the initiative that came from my staffs, uh, these type of designs, uh, these type of designs that are coming from my staff. So, yeah, look, yeah, whoever wants to design, they start with them. I always do it very conceptually. And then from there onwards, they get excited about getting the the nitty gritty uh, details to, 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 that, to that space. All right. No, thank you. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any hand. Does anybody wants to talk to my mother? Is 
Let me say what to Manoba. Yes, so, Yes, I've seen the various. Morning, uh, good morning. I enjoy your various work, my. The reason why I tell all this thing, I want to see how all of you are growing and you are guys are doing very well in the right direction. So I'm, I'm excited that I'm still living to see all those things. You know, that is very important. So uh, I enjoy your work. If I start from the Sansibar that you, you went to, you know, in, in my early days, many years ago, I might taught you something on the city. But yeah. what is very interesting in that city, which I would expect you to bring out, is that uh, you see in Zanzibar, there's a lot of pedestrians in Zanzibar. Right. A lot of people right. living on the street. Don't you think it's one of the things in the contemporary city, yeah, especially Durban here, that we should try to emulate and have a nice, uh, beautiful pedestrian within our city. Not the one, not paving, not paving on the side, but even a dedicated area that you see in some of the European uh, city and those of you who work for me in those days, I send them outside the country to Europe, to Italy, to uh, Spain, to all those things. Uh, I, I think uh, this is the group of, uh, uh, I forgot it in them now, they, they, because they are all of them coming and going, they came back, they, they tried to um, bring those things. So I think to me, your journey is, is very important because architecture also have two ways of learning. One, you do, do a formal one in the university and the one you do in the environment as you move around, you yeah. sense it and all those things. So that, that was very interesting for me. Even for you in that bicycle, I could see you feel happy. You do, That's the type of thing we wanted to see. Uh, enjoying yourself, even the type of uh, uh, horses they use. If you go to European city, you see they still have this hockey something taking them around the city. So my... My thing that I have uh, also that you bring that element of pedestrian humane environment into uh, into this into our city in future because if you look up and now uh, oh. apart from the beachfront, uh, tell me where, and we are in a very nice clim climatic factors oh, yeah. that oh, they can oh. allow you us to spend most of the time outside because you are talking about eco city and that's why I brought it oh. out. So there's a lot of things that you can. Uh, you can take there that is that I really like that even one make an attempt to understand how those cities are put together. And uh, even if you see the door you are seeing, also the door also was trying to express the, the power of the economy of oh. the people, the merchant that came during that period from the Arab world. And also you also see a composition, which is something we have to try to see whether we can achieve that, where they have a, a combination of the indigenous architecture oh. and I call the other one transport architecture, the one they come, those people come from the slave trade, they come back, or the Arabs, what they brought into the place that those don't, you are seeing, you know, this have various things. Then the courtyard, as you have been dealing with okay. courtyard, I'm very impressed with that. You see now, courtyard is not only applicable to where we put building together, they also put it within the city. You could see where you see the paving outside where you where you walk through Sansiba. So those are the and I'm very I'm impressed that you you were able to uh, to see those those type of thing, which is very very important because it will help in the future. Then in generally in, in terms of your architecture too, I'm also very interesting and also don't lose hope on the shopping center <laughs> so, because many architects is that and I think you say you don't really like shopping, but towards the end you want to commercial you have an approach an ideology towards it and a concept and you you hit it maybe that's the best way to to approach it because there's nothing we can run away from the profession we have to we have to do that no i'm really i'm really impressed i like the way you use your spaces especially for the schools it's only in the schools some of your culture why are they not no trees and all those things inside them to, Sorry, to create in your courtyard in the school you yeah, see, they yeah. seem to me, I know some of them, they always say they want it to be uh, where the student line up and play, but it doesn't mean we can also put trees inside them to create some shade uh, for the children when they come out during break. That's the only thing I would say, those courtyards. And they are still early stage anyway, but they are very, very interesting thing that I see. So I'm happy to see that. 
So I think my is just to, to, to come in, to come and see what you guys are doing. And it's exciting. Now your house on the hill also, the one they gave you a challenge to, to leave the green and then they push it, push it down. Also, it yeah. was very interesting. If you look at good enterprise, we did a, what you get, a telecommunication on the on the landscape. He he set it into the landscape, and the landscape is not destroyed. And I think oh. that's what they are. They they they, 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 were, they are since which uh, uh, I really uh, yes that that is uh, this one. And even oh, yeah. even the language you are using on all this toning is related to nature, the organic. There's some of them oh, right. start coming to your building, which is which is interesting. So anyway, uh, thank you very much. That's the only thing I can say. Keep it up, and I wish you guys all the best. I would, would like to see more in the future too. Thank you. No, I think uh, thank, you. thank you, Prof. I think I must thank you as well. I think we were one of your students that gave you uh, most of the gray hairs that you have. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Lindsay. Thanks, Guru. Hi, Manku. Enjoyed it very much. Um, I was interested in your um, uh, film set type of design um, in near Tugela River. Um, yeah. I was living in Ishawi when the um, Shaka Land Shaka film was filmed and the, the yeah. Um, yeah. complex was built. Um, but I'm sure a lot has changed in the approach to designing a, a complex like this. Um, just interested to, to know if you're considering using existing vernacular or existing buildings, um, uh, vernacular architecture, it must be quite a challenge to meet the brief in this case. Indeed, it is, I must say, yeah, because some of those uh, red um, uh, unit, I think um, red, red um, shaded buildings, uh, some of them they are existing, uh, which really poses some of the challenge. I think uh, one of my students who is now in the um, who is now a Mark client, uh, worked on this. I think her brains were welcome. Uh, she's now with the, with the department, uh, Nigiwe. Um, look, we, we had a quite a lot of fun. Um, the challenges though with that, uh, with that project is, is they existing, existing as much as the clients say they, they spent the money on to it, you know, and they wouldn't want to do it away with that. Um, yet that type of canvas uh, or aesthetic that are there has no place to what we're trying to put or trying to, to show on, on, the, on that particular site which is a bit of a challenge really, uh, because the people when they want to, 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 to go to a sort of a, a cultural type of architecture, either for creating a movie or just visiting to be a part of that, uh, they wouldn't want to see the same thing that they've seen, you know, all around. I would use that as an example, traveling from Johannesburg in that concrete jungle coming down to Devon, you want to um, interface, have an interface of what are the Zulu like? You want to see the crawl, almost you want to see in the environment that you will find in the Zulu land. Uh, and some of the, the current type of architecture that you see um, in these rural areas now where people in the community have adapted to the new style of architecture, uh, it really spoils what, what you're trying to essentially want to achieve. I would like to have this site somewhere in the remote areas where we can print, have a backdrop of nice hills, um, uh, you know, um, environment 
I wouldn't want to have this site slam bang in the in the in the area where you look around and you file you feel that it's it's a bit of spoiling. So yes, those are the challenges uh, really. And when we're saying that we want to do the, the architectural Zulu culture, you essentially want to do hundred percent. You know, the likes of if you were to go to Pansy Museum, um, uh, you want to see the type of environment, the type of, uh, you know, the mats, uh, clay pottery, uh, you know, that type of environment, even the, 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 uh, the attire, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to have something uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm uh, over exaggerating it. Yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And I think it's a great opportunity to do it properly. Um, well, yeah. you, you don't, you don't want to do it um, too distilled or, or too um, Mickey Mouse. So, yeah. and the main thing is, is as you said, have fun. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we would have such sight in Peter Myersbeck in, inside the CPD, which really, it, it would be more of a, a museum. We want yeah. people to feel in touch and be a part of that community. Right. Thank you, Lindsay. Lovely maneuver. Any other question, please? So, sorry, uh, Chairperson. Um, uh, yes. I would like to, uh, since we were just discussing, to yeah. talk to Lindsay about, uh, since uh, I've served with Lindsay, um, mm -hmm. one of the communities, heritage communities. Sure, sure. And um, we, We've been given a brief, Lindsay. It's not what I've been present, what what I have presented. But um, these churches in Pyramidsburg, some of them have been decommissioned. They're no longer uh, churches. And uh, we've been asked by one of the clients to put a, a restaurant. You know, to come up uh, with to create a, a restaurant um being number one a christian uh, you you feel that you uh, you have a challenges to change the environment that you know um it, 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 the ethics let me put it that way the ethics that are associated to such uh, the brief and what you need to do to architecture, you feel that yes, the church is lying dormant, nothing is happening to it. And next thing, the vagrant, they're gonna be pulling some of the element, giving another new, new lease of life um, to gut it, to either create an office or that type of um, um, a design where you change it to, to either be a restaurant of sort. It's, it has challenges. What is your take to that such a brief? I, I'm, I know that you should be asking me questions, but I uh, just need us to strike a conversation on that. Yeah, that's interesting one, Manku. Um, I think it's, it's a, a question of finding a sensitive use. Um, I, I think architects are pushed around quite a lot by developers um, to, to do the immediate need, whereas we could be looking at uses that maybe they haven't considered. Um, mm. And I find the, the restaurant functions very destructive and invasive. Um, yes. And I don't think it's appropriate for these buildings, but uh, although it has been done in overseas and other buildings, um, with every commercial kind of use, you're going to come with some invasive problem. Um, so it's finding a match. It's finding a um, something that complements the building, complements the area. So it's very localized, um, very 
it's determined by the um, yeah. by the the locality. Um, so it's it's a big debate about this, the his, history and the um, Christian values of the building. Um, that could be a whole nother session. Um, very interesting discussion to have. Um, so Skura, maybe we should do that sometime. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, Lindsay, because um, the, the, the importance of your question, Menchu, is that uh, as an architect, you could say, uh, I, I, I'll pass on this uh, project if you, if you really want to force my hand into doing something. Uh, it may not be a restaurant, it may be something else that you feel is not the, the right response. Uh, and then there's another architect who will take it on. And so, Lindsay, okay. definitely, we actually do need to have um, a view about it. We do, we do need to, to empower each other and talk about it, definitely. Yeah, maybe the, maybe through the maybe through the heritage or with collaboration with the heritage uh, uh, committee, but uh, definitely a discussion to be had. Yeah, yeah. Can I can I come in here? Uh, yes, bro. You, you see, I think the the sentimental of our Christianity, our belief, at time uh, construed us not to do what we wanted to do. And in many cases, even uh, in, when you look at what happened during the Second World War, there's one thing I wrote, I wrote about morale and the morality of the architects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, to say, why can't you not reject certain projects and why do you have to do it? Like what, like the concessional cap, where you know they are going to keep people there, they are going to bomb people there, but somebody have to do it. But in the argument they said is that if we don't do it, like we kill you. So this is two uh, option. So that is the morality of it. But when it comes to church, we also need to be very careful and not to take it in a very face value. We need to understand, because I've done a lot of work on churches and all those things, to understand the church itself. It's a holy oh, place. God. It's a place for his people. But it didn't define what that type of people should be. So it doesn't mean that uh, if you look at uh, Great Britain and many people uh, who are even Italy, all these people who are high Catholic and all those things, they put residential inside. Some use it for offices. Some say even I know a colleague in Europe, which I work with, ah, they say to work in a house of God is a blessing. So it depends on your, your philosophy, your interpretation. For you to say, oh, you yeah, are not going to do it because we see come from the lower end of our Christianity that we believe it, but we need to see also Christianity uh, in a broader sense of the Bible, what it means, what it serves for the people. So me, I, I personally, we don't have any problem against it to put, even we're talking of restaurant, the only thing about restaurant is that people are drinking and all those stuff. That's the only thing that go. But there you have a place where the children come, they have a children party, they have adult party, they have old people. It's a house of God. Yeah. And so then this holy place also, before they started building houses for it, some people used to do it under the tree. Some create uh, along the edge of water, the sand, that is called the holy land. All those sort of things, the way Moses, where God says he must refuse, remove his children, where you are, it's a holy land. It's a, it's a sand. And that place will become a holy ground. Do you say those areas cannot be turned to something else? So that is the is What I don't uh, like to see in such a church is uh, like hotel, where uh, it become a different type of hotel. That I would not just. That is my own moral, but other people will even argue against that. Why, why? Are they not human beings? So I don't see any problem in that uh, restaurant. It depends on how you, you structure your restaurant, what type of food and things they will be having in that restaurant. And uh, uh, alternatively, the restaurant also could be a place that there's no much division. And if they want to use it as a function hall for uh, banquet, Although we have COVID now, that we are not going to be <laughs> to be uh, having a large of people inside the hall, 
but the outside the building, that is what I will argue against. I will not touch it. I will leave his, his, his character to blend, to retain the history. But inside, that's a different type of conservation. I think a, a lot of looting cons conservation has to be just purely of the uh, uh, of the old. No, you have an example in the in the city center where they change the one inside. So that should be that's a very good example, and that's what we we tend to be. You want to you want to come inside and say, wow, the conservation in the one in some of the houses are working in Europe. The facade, we don't change it. We just put another concrete to support that uh, facade, bolt it to reach, create it. But when you get inside, wow, you see a beautiful architecture mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. Some of the staircase, we retain it because they have this beautiful old staircase. We make sure we, we, we call it restoration. We restore it to blend with the new. So there's a lot of things you can, you can do. And that's a challenge for you as a young man in the architecture to say, how will I approach this big hall? So that's what I will, it also it can be a function for a wedding. It can be a place reception for wedding after those. Those are all part of church. So I, I think uh, leave your mind open, read the Bible and see what the Bible even say in so by interpretation. I don't think you should totally say no. It's a challenge, it's a good project for you actually <laughs> to, okay. to, to work around it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank, thanks, Prof. Uh, to me, Sanya, I don't know if you, you still wanted to say something. I saw your hand up. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, can morning. you hear me? Yes, sure. Yeah, can you hear? Yeah, thank, thanks, Mr. President. Uh, uh, morning, uh, Manchu. Morning. Yes, I must say I love your, your I enjoyed your presentation from beginning to the end. Um, yeah. One uh, short thing I, I must comment on and uh, is that I, I picked up um, one exciting thing, your, your passionate engagement with each project that you, that you do, uh, regardless of the size, the type, the mm. complexity, the geographical location of the project, that's, that, that's very important. So I, I, I really love that. Even, mm -hmm. even the one that you, you, you feel you don't like, the, the shopping centers, you, mm. you, once you see that element, you, you, you engage really passionately. That's my little comment. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Mshava. Thank you. Thank you, Jumi. Um, any other question or comment before we close? I think we're all good. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, uh, well prepared. Uh, it was really good to see um, how the company has grown, the approach of the company to, to various projects. Uh, thank you so much for, 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 sharing your, for, for sharing your journey with us, man. Thank you. Any closing comments from your side? Uh, yeah, th thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I would like you, uh, the, the, this platform, should I say, Saya KZN, to give us you know, other, another opportunity. I think this is a great start for us. We have identified, uh, it's not going to be now about me, but it's going to be a number of guys that we we, we we intending to give you guys some insight of how these schools, and I've said it, these schools, how they've been designed. I think it's a small scale. Uh, I think there's quite a lot of emphasis um, that we're putting. FGG worked on some of these schools, and I would like to talk to them and uh, we can present these campuses. It's amazing, it's really amazing. Uh, the spaces that have been provided for, for, uh, for these schools, the emphasis uh, on the detail, the way they're being looked after. Uh, I think if we start there, then we can do some of these campuses, do even the building. Um, um, what you call it, the 
have um, uh, have a um, assessment of government buildings, given an opportunity able to get some of those guys. You know, the precinct, uh, like uh, Department of Transport. Uh, I know that some of the colleagues are also working on a huge project regarding these precincts. We, we, we need to talk about those. Uh, mm. The hospital design, we need to talk about it. And I'd like us to create this platform as like you have started now. I know that you started long time ago, and but uh, Mr. President, we really need to support. There's so much that needs to be said. And another thing, they are, the sad thing is that the buildings, um, all the cities collectively, uh, they're having challenges of being uh, vandalized so badly. Uh, we need to talk about it. How do we can secure these buildings? How do people have a respect? Um, whenever we've got differences, we feel that the building needs to be on flame, a school, a clinic, mm. and so on. So we really need to be able to teach our community on how to preserve and protect something that is ours. I think in the word it does not go um, out enough to everyone out there. Uh, mm. I think it's high time that we, uh, this forum, we understand each other because we're colleagues, but how do we go out to other communities out there? You know, yeah. uh, maybe we can start with the school, do the same thing, you know, try and change the mindset of the young ones, uh, not to ban the university, um, not, to, not to ban the, uh, the, the parliament. I'm just using those as an example. So mm. thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. And I think uh, there's quite more to come. And you have thank challenged you. Yeah, no, thank you so much, uh, you. I think you actually don't realize you have so much work till you actually put it together. And I think that's what you are realizing yourself now. Yeah, you are definitely more than welcome again to share. In the future, we'll be in touch, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you for joining in. Yeah, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian.